Okay, so you're wondering, what exactly is Stadia? We've got you covered. Stadia is an all-new way to enjoy your favorite hit video games, only you don't need an expensive console or PC to play. Stadia streams games directly from Google's data centers to your devices. It's kind of like streaming music or TV shows, but with high-quality video games. To play on your TV, plug in a Chromecast Ultra and set up your Stadia controller using the Stadia app on your phone. Once you're set up, you buy the game you want, then you play it instantly. You don't have to wait for it to download either. Seconds after you press purchase, you'll be streaming your game directly from the internet to your screen. And since it's powered by Google's data centers, your games can run at premium specs, up to 4K resolution and 60 frames per second with high dynamic range colors. But it doesn't stop with your TV. You can bring the same incredible gaming experiences to just about all the screens in your life. Your favorite games on your laptop, desktop, and select tablets and smartphones. Is your roommate interrupting your game to watch a show? Switch over to your laptop and pick up right where you left off. On a trip, stream games on your smartphone. Anywhere you've got Wi-Fi, you're just a click away from buying the latest titles and instantly playing your games. Which also means you're always a click away from playing with your friends. The Stadia controller connects directly to the Stadia servers to give you lightning-fast response time when playing wirelessly. If you're in love with another controller or a mouse and keyboard, you can use those to play Stadia on your computer. Stadia Pro is our premium subscription. It gives you up to 4K resolution with 5.1 surround sound and free games regularly. The longer you're subscribed to Stadia Pro and the more free games you claim, the larger your collection will be. Now you're an expert in all things Stadia coming to all kinds of screens everywhere. For the latest updates on Stadia, follow at Google Stadia or visit stadia.com. So imagine you've just discovered that game for the first time. You're running it on the Chrome browser. And here it is on a Pixelbook uh, running the Chrome OS. There is basically no hardware acceleration on that laptop whatsoever. And the game is running directly from our data center. It's then easy and instantaneous to move that same game experience from exactly that moment onto the phone, here on a Pixel 3 XL. Once again, no loss in quality, and we can go straight onto the desktop PC. We actually went to buy the least powerful PC we could find here. Um, and we could uh, enjoy the same vision that the developer had, the same high quality 1080p stream at 60 frames per second and the full game vision, regardless of the hardware that you're using. And then it's once again seamless to go from running on our uh, PC to running on a tablet. Uh, in this case, once again, uh, running the Chrome uh, OS uh, on a Pixel Slate. And then finally, we then move seamlessly to the TV. And so this TV is accessed using this, which is a Chromecast Ultra HDMI streamer. There is no console required to reach this experience. Thanks, Khaled. Great presentation. Here it is, finally, the Stadia is in studio. This has the potential to change video games forever. This is the Founders Edition, as you can tell, fancy packaging. One place for all the ways that we play. What else does it say on it? Founders Edition, so this will include the controller as well as the Google Chromecast Ultra. Let's check out what's inside the package. That's the most important component when it comes to the Founders Edition, it is, of course, this controller, you can probably tell it's kind of inspired by other controllers you've seen in the past. Hmm, okay, a little comfy there, Will. Oh yeah? Dare I say, couple of analog sticks over here. We've also got A, B, X, Y buttons over here, fairly tactile. Now there are some specific buttons in the center for various features that are gonna be available in Stadia, including an assistant button right there. You can tell from the icon. So all kinds of special functionality that ties into other Google services and makes the whole thing more smart. At least that's the idea. USB type C connector over here to charge this up. Big trigger buttons, in fact. You're also gonna be able to get this controller in white. Founders edition, 
130 bucks includes the Chromecast Ultra. That's what enables you to put the Stadia games up on a television. Not necessary though, important to note. Even the controller, not necessary to enjoy Stadia. You can play straight on your smartphone, straight on your Android device, Pixel device, or otherwise, and even iPhone. And a Chrome browser, because you're not tied down to, to one particular interaction. So this controller here is called Night Blue. It's the limited edition with the Founders Edition. Okay, so there's the Premier Edition now, which comes with the white controller instead of this one, but then that's also gonna ship with the Chromecast. So this, I mean, it's a perk for the founders, obviously, that you've got a controller that is indicative of the fact that you've got the earliest version, but there is a premier version you can order now, which also gives you the combination of products that are inside of here. You can also just pick up the controller on its own for $69. It comes in three colors, clearly white, just black, and wasabi. Does it feel like an Xbox controller weight? I'd say it's a little lighter. Lighter. Maybe. Okay. So also in the package, we have a fairly long USB Type-C cable to charge it up. The promise of creating one place for all the ways we play is a long-held dream. Today, we're proud to see that dream become a reality. Those stickers as well. This is your console. Look at this thing. See that little tiny? Yeah. That's the Chromecast Ultra. You see with the magnetic connection there. And that's all you're gonna need to get it up on your TV. The hardcore processing is going on in the background. Well, it's going on on the servers, Google's handling it, and they're handing it back to you. So this will hook up to any HDMI monitor that you have. It has its own power brick. It also includes a dedicated ethernet jack. So if you want an even more robust connection for your Chromecast Ultra, you can actually wire it up. Of course, you can also connect it wirelessly. Google actually sent along with this a couple of other things, some curious things over here. So we have a Pixel 3a XL. Of course, you don't have to use a Pixel 3a XL. You can use whichever device you, you want with this controller, this setup, and of course, Stadia. A Type-C cable, a fairly robust looking Type-C cable. Again, you could probably use whichever is at your disposal. And then they also included this mount right here. This allows you to mount your smartphone and controller together. So let's give this a shot. So look at this. Okay, so you mount it up like that. You still have access to your headset jack as well as the Stadia button. And there's also this cutout over here for your Type-C connector so you can keep it charged. Then this portion on the front is actually spring-loaded. So you can insert whichever phone you like in there. You could, I mean, it could be a Pixel 3a XL. It could be the newer Pixel. It could be an iPhone for that matter. This is the Max. Yeah, look at that. There's a gaming solution right there. This is an early unboxing video. This is the Founders Edition, and it's all I can post right now. I have not tried Stadia. I will put out a video with gameplay and all the rest of it on Monday at the earliest, at my earliest ability, at which point I'm actually allowed to because this is, as I mentioned so early. At this point, it's strictly an unboxing video to give you a better idea of the hardware. So definitely stay tuned for the gameplay video. It's coming out on Monday. As of right now, that's an unboxing. It's the Stadia Founders Edition. As satisfying as it is to piece together a shiny new gaming PC or unwrap a lovely new console on Christmas morning, there's no denying how convenient it would be to be able to just load up and play your games from anywhere, even if you're using a system that isn't all that powerful. And although simple browser games have been around for a long time, remember addictinggames.com and Miniclip? Running anything more immersive or powerful has typically required some kind of dedicated hardware. But now, there are a number of services that are trying to alleviate the load that your computer has to handle by streaming games directly to you. That is to say that most of the computationally intensive work is done on a server somewhere far away and then the completed rendered frames are delivered to your PC via the internet. And with rising internet speeds and games taking up more and more space on your computer's local storage, game streaming is becoming an increasingly crowded marketplace, especially with Google announcing their new streaming service called Stadia, which will work with nothing more than a browser or a smart TV, an internet connection, and then optionally Google's own game controller. But as much buzz as there's been around it, there are a few things that we'd like to see from Stadia to help propel game streaming more to the forefront. First off is, of course, the elephant in the room, 
latency. For obvious reasons, when you're playing a game, you expect something to happen on the screen as soon as you press a button or click your mouse. And while this is basically never an issue if you're gaming on a local machine, it's a real concern if you're expecting a server hundreds of miles away to respond instantly to you moving a targeting reticle. Now, Google is hoping to mitigate the latency issues that have plagued other streaming services. Part of the solution will probably come from the fact that they just have more cloud infrastructure. I mean, think about it. It's freaking Google. So the fact that they have more servers in more places should help to reduce both ping time and inherently the latency of your connection. So like a Stadia gamer might be connecting to a server 50 miles away instead of one that is 500 miles away. Hopefully this will keep games from lagging out. But another major hurdle is going to be image quality. And I don't mean to say that Google is, you know, going to be using weak graphics cards to render Stadia games. In fact, they're apparently using arrays of custom AMD Radeon chips that sound pretty freaking powerful. The issue, though, is that like the vast majority of digital video online, the rendered frames will almost certainly need to be compressed before they're sent across the internet so that a standard connection actually has any hope of handling them. So that means there could be some degradation in quality by the time they hit your screen. Now, Google is expecting a 25 megabit home internet connection to be good enough to stream games at 4K resolution, 60 frames per second. And that's a speed that's certainly within reach of many users. But in order to keep the game from lagging, well, 25 megabit, 4K 60, the image quality may not be as good as some gamers would like. So we're gonna have to see if Google has a solution to this issue in the works. That said, all the tech in the world isn't going to matter unless it's actually easy to access the games that people want to play. And it's still a bit of an open question as to how libraries are going to be handled on Stadia. Now, PlayStation Now, Sony's streaming offering, only offers a rotating list of games, so it's never clear if you can rely on a certain title being on the platform for too long. GeForce Now from NVIDIA only supports certain games from Steam, Uplay, and Battle.net, and has been in an invite-only beta for a very long time. And Blade, while fairly slick, has a fairly expensive monthly fee. With the amount of storage and connectivity in Google's arsenal, however, the hope is that Stadia will not only have a large library of games to pick from at a reasonable price, be it a la carte or by subscription, but that it will also give people the ability to bring their own games in and run them off of Google servers, or at least grant access to those same titles so that gamers won't have to pay again for a game that they already own. One thing standing in the way, though, is the fact that unlike PlayStation Now or GeForce Now, where games will run just natively as is on the servers, Stadia is an entirely new platform built on Linux, meaning that many titles will have to be ported over in order to work. And game ports take both time and resources to do properly. You can actually learn more about that up here. What that means in a nutshell, though, is that it's possible that this issue will affect what kinds of games will be available, as well as which previously owned games users will be able to bring to the service. And of course, we'd also like to see streaming platforms other than YouTube get supported. It's an open question at this time as to whether Stadia will allow gamers to stream to Twitch, since it's in direct competition with YouTube, which is, of course, owned by Google. But to be fair, there are some cool YouTube-centric features in the works, including the ability for a Stadia user to start playing the game being streamed with the click of a button, or even join the streamer's game. Even with all these questions yet to be answered, though, it's certainly exciting for an absolute titan of cloud computing like Google to finally throw its hat into the streaming ring. My only hope is that it's not so good that people will just stop building gaming rigs altogether. Otherwise, we're going to run out of video ideas pretty quickly. <laughs> Speaking of streaming things over the internet, Check out Private Internet Access VPN. PIA hides your true IP address and allows you to bypass geo restrictions and censorship by making you appear as though you're connecting from somewhere else. And what's cool is you can use it on up to five devices at once with a single account. PIA helps prevent attacks by blocking unwanted connections and keeps your data out of the hands of advertisers and other activity tracking snoops. And it's got all kinds of great features, including preventing DNS leaks and even MACE, PIA's built-in malware blocker. 
It supports multiple VPN protocols, so you can dial in exactly the level of protection you need. And they've got apps for Windows, Mac, iOS, Android, and even a Chrome extension. Finally, PIA does not log your activity, and they have over 3,000 servers in 33 countries. So what are you waiting for? Check them out today at the link in the video description. So thanks for watching, guys. Like, dislike, check out our other videos, leave a comment with video suggestions, and don't forget to subscribe and follow so that you can spend more of your time admiring this fantastic new sweater. I'm actually trying out. We don't have it available in our store yet, but I think it's pretty cool. Oops. Shilling the LTT merch on TechWiki. Oh no, John's gonna beat me.